Saturday's governorship election in Imo State is expected to be a keenly contested one. Governor Hope Uzodima, who is seeking a second term on the platform of the All Progressives Congress, APC, remains, many say, the candidate to beat for many reasons. But he has to contend with factors, such as the insecurity in the state, the clamor for power shift or Zuni, and the growing popularity of the opposition parties. However, all eyes are on the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, to conduct the election in a manner to achieve transparency and restore the confidence of the people in the electoral process. Joining us now on the morning show is George Agbakai, a PC chieftain and an indigenous of Imo State. Good morning. Good morning, and thank you for having me, um, Dr. Abati and um, Mr. Ayo. Uh, no, it's Rufai was saying that is here. Uh, Ayo Myra is here, he's on uh, vacation. But first, okay. first, let me start by congratulating you on your PhD. Uh, so welcome to the club. Uh, so Dr. George Agbakahi, uh, you know, another feather to your cap. But let's talk about Imo State election this weekend. It's your state. Well, I don't want to ask you where you stand in the matter. You belong to the APC, so naturally, you will say that uh, uh, Governor Opis or Dima has done well. So let's establish that you are a biased, <laughs> you are a biased person in the matter. But can you go ahead and campaign before we look at the other issues? But I also want you to know that I'm an objective political analyst. Apart from being an APC member, I've been pretty objective in my analysis all along. Even during the presidential election, you know, I was also objective and it came out to be so. You see, um, I remember Mario Como, one time governor of New York, I think in the 80s. He once said that you campaign in poetry, but govern in prose. And I sincerely believe that Governor Hope Uzorima of Imo State has governed fundamentally in prose. When he came in as governor three and a half years ago, he has instituted a paradigm shift through his three-hour policy of recovery, rehabilitation, and reconstruction. As a matter of fact, the massive transformation of Imo State from a backward state to one of the fastest growing and developing state in this country is a testament to the good work that Governor Hopu Zodema has done in Imo State. In fact, as you say that, it is the hallmark of his administration where you take into consideration all indicators, be it economic, be it political, be it infrastructure, he has did a whole lot to improve the well-being of the Ime people. There are a lot he has done. Which one will I start enumerating? In the area of employment, our governor is somebody who is an astute administrator. He understands what administration is is not only employing people in government work. It's not only giving somebody fish. Now he gives people, he gave them tools to be able to catch this fish. Look at the scale up emo. The scale up emo is one of the fundamental cardinal points of this administration. The digital skill acquisition and empowerment of the youths. Oh, man. This governor has done a whole lot. In the first place, you are aware that 5,000 youths in the first cohort, 5,000 youths has graduate, had graduated. Just about a month or two months ago, 15,000 youths graduated. And now, about 40,000 youths are all applying to participate in this digital scale acquisition. Go to Imo State, in the area of agriculture, youths, they have been activated. 
to participate in agriculture. Go to Inishi, go to Okigwe, go to Haji, and so many other areas. Governor activated thousands, thousands of farmlands where youths are, you know, performing. Listen, let me tell you. Okay. In the area of road construction, this is an area that the governor has done massively well. In his okay. first year in office, he constructed 46 roads in Imo State, something that is on hand of. Okay, sir. You know? In, so, okay, yes. Sir. Okay, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, you've said a lot. Thank you, and congratulations on your uh, PhD. Congratulations to you on that. I'd like you to comment about security in Imo before the governor, and now that the governor is there. A lot of people, and you reckon, the situation was a whole lot better before the governor got in. After the governor got in, security is a bedlam. Imo has now become uh, a place inundated with a lot of insecurity. I want you to comment about that first. And secondly, Imo has now become, you know, a case that causes jitters. It is an Imo that the NLC president was manhandled. And why was he manhandled? Because he went to protest. And he protested based on the fact that workers were not treated well, salaries were not paid promptly, there was a lot of discrimination in the civil service, and a lot of problems happened in Imo. What would you say about these two blights on this governor's administration? Thank you very much. I think the issue of security is one that has been discussed extensively, you know, in the country. Also in Imo State, as well as other Southeast states. And we all know how this problem came about. Most of the issues of insecurity in Imo is also related to other Southeastern states. With IPOB and their Eastern Security Network. But more importantly, you remember when the jail, the correctional facility in Owere, you know, was attacked. A whole lot of criminal elements absconded from the jail. And truly, that is the statement of the major insecurity in Imo State. And it is on record that part of this insecurity is also politically motivated. If you see what is going on in Imo State, most of the people that are victims of this insecurity are PD, APC stewards. You are aware of local government chairman in Aaron Dizogi, that or not, that was killed. You are aware the attorney general of Imo State, his house was burnt. Even the current um, House of Rep member representing a low area, his house was recently bombed. But the issue is that the opposition parties, they have never condemned this part of insecurity that has been going on. But our Apulian governor has been working hard to stem this part of insecurity. And he has succeeded in doing it. You know, it is not an easy, easy, easy work. You know, the federal government has gotten involved, the military, the police, they've all gotten involved. I believe our governor has done a great job in ameliorating these issues of insecurity. In the, in the area of, in the area of um, the issue of NLC, you know, this is an issue that when you speak to an objective analyst, you will hear the truth. There has been a lot of stories in the social media, which is not the truth. So does that justify? Yeah, I, we've had in several quarters. So does that justify the manhandling of Mr. Joe uh, Ajero, that his face was bit, he was beaten in the face that's blue, where, black? That, and, so does that justify him being treated that way? I ask you. That, that's where I'm coming to. The problem with the NLC leader is in no way related to the government. There was an issue between the local NLC chapter and the national. Mind you, there has been a subsisting court order restraining NLC from protesting in Imo State. And for the NLC leader, who happens to also come from Imo, 
to start doing, conducting a protest in spite of the court order. Don't you see that it is politically motivated? We in politics, we are aware that he is a labor leader in court, but in actions and spiritually, he is a politician. He belongs to a political party. And we all know that. That, that is exactly what you see happening. This is politically motivated. Well, Mr. The Mr. people Mr. that we are having issues with him Mr. are members, Mr. Are Mr. members of the local chapter Mr. of Mr. the NLC, and it is in no way the government. Mr. Yes. Bakari, with respect, you've not answered my question. Does that justify him beating that way he was treated? Does that justify it? If you, if you, had, if you had listened to the report of the Nigerian police force, it was noted that he was being beaten, I believe, by hoodlums, as well as members of the local chapter of the NLC. But does that justify it? The police it? came in to rescue him. But does that justify it? That is, no, no, no. That, that's, under Uzo no, no, state. What I'm saying is. Does that justify somebody being beaten because they came for a protest under Uzo state? Does that justify it? I just ask you that question, sir. No, no. But, but you also have to talk about the genesis of this. Does that and justify it? who are the it? people that got Mr. into Bakai. altercation with him? Mr. Bakai. I, I'm, not, I'm not saying there's justification for it, but the, the government and the APC as a party okay. do not have any hand in that. But that he claimed otherwise. Was... Well, he claimed otherwise anyway. The NLC has also claimed otherwise. Okay, so. Dr. Bakai. He Dr. Bakai. He, 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 yes. Dr. Bakai, if yes. you say that uh, the APC had no hand in the brutalization of Joe Ajero. So which political party is responsible for it? Can you identify the political party? You say Joe Ajero belongs to a political party. Could he have been beaten up by his own political party? Do you have any information as uh, an Imo state uh, stakeholder, Imolites? That's the phrase you guys use. That's number one. Because there must be somebody that is behind it. Two, the Inspector General of Police has removed uh, Mohamed Badi, the same man that caused uh, some uh, problem in uh, Adamawa State from Imo State, where under his watch some problem has also occurred. But a coalition of civil society groups is saying that no, removing the uh, Commissioner of Police is not enough. That other security uh, leaders in that state, <coughs> including the DSS head, including other persons, including uh, even the Abu Beyagu that is causing problems, who have to go. And that President Tinubu has to call Opuzodima to order. What do you say to all, all of that? Because it's almost Saturday, and well, uh, Nigerians are worried. We just want peace in Nemo State. What do I, you want? I, I, <laughs> I think, um, Dr. Abati, what you're listening, you're listening to the opposition, and they are not being objective. They are not being objective. Civil in society groups? Listen. Do they constitute the opposition? Civil society organizations? Well, they are not we, seeking elected position, are they? There are, civil so <laughs> there, there are civil society groups that are not objective. Just like I said, the president of that Nigerian Labor Congress is not being objective in what is going on in Imo State. You know, but in respect of the removal of the INEC chief in Imo State, it is not unusual. It happens closer to the election. It has happened in other states. That does not have anything to do with the government. You know, listen, our governor, distinguished Senator Hopu Zadima, he will win this election. You must add distinguished. He will win this election based on his track record. Nigerians. <laughs> He's a distinguished. This is a, this is a gentleman that has leadership qualities. In each trajectory, in the ladder he has been going politically. Mind you, when he was Senate, in the Senate, he was the chairman of Southern Senators Forum, isn't it? Now, as a governor, he is the chairman of the Progressive Governors Forum. There is something in him that people have found out that he has that leadership qualities. 
He is going to win this election based on his track record. He has done a whole lot to improve the well-being of Imo people. A whole lot. And we are looking for somebody. Like I had said earlier on, there are so many elements you look at when you are trying to consider somebody to head a state like Imo State. Who has that capacity? Who has that tenacity? Who has that sagacity? Who is compassionate? Who is approachable? And if you compare Governor Hope Uzodema and try to just oppose him with the candidate, the key candidates, which is the candidate of the Labour Party and the candidate of the People's Democratic Party, we all know their antecedents as emo people. What have they done that will make the emo people believe that they can do better than the incumbent? The incumbent has done a whole lot. Go to okay. Imo State. Okay. All the okay. 305 head centers in the wards, this gentleman, our governor, he has been able to re rehabilitate all these you know, head centers. Even hospitals, new ones has been built. You know of the one that was recently built in Uguta that was commissioned just about a month or two months ago. He has done a whole lot. Okay. And listen, he's an APC man. The president is an APC man. We in Imo believe that we will better join the federal government party, which is APC, than voting for Labour or PDP that will stand alone. Because we know the benefit that will accrue, you know, from joining the president's party. Okay, that on, on that note, on that note uh, Dr. Agbaka, I would like to thank you very much for joining us on The Morning Show.